The son James Brown, we came on with some P-Funk. Never get too much P-Funk. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Cliff Russell. This is the Cliff Russell Show. Our number, 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600. And I would love for you to call me. Um, I want to begin our discussion today about the celebration of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Now, tomorrow we're, we're supposed to have Michael M. Hotel back on the show. We're going to talk more about the legacy of Martin Luther King and how, in, in many ways, he has been misrepresented by all kinds of interests. You got Republicans uh, walking around here talking about that Dr. King was a Republican. You have folks from every walk of life who want to claim that Dr. King was one of, him, one of them. Uh, but the truth is, Dr. King needs to be studied a lot more. People need to understand the full context of his message. I am a uh, believer in the Kingian philosophy. And so uh, I always try to do something special around this time of year. Again, our number is 313-778-7600. Uh, I think a lot of people want to believe that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was strictly a pacifist uh, and somebody who wanted a dream to come true. And that was it. But Dr. King was well-versed and very knowledgeable about a wide array of issues and topics that affect this country and affect this world. If you ever get a chance to look at his speeches, to listen to the ones that were recorded, uh, to read his books, you will find out that Dr. King had a lot to say about uh, the future and technology and how that has impacted social conditions in this country. Dr. King talked about war and the evils of war and about how the money that is spent on war could be used to hurt, excuse me, to feed those who are hurt by poverty and by uh, economic conditions. As a matter of fact, it's very interesting when you talk about the money that is spent on the military that could have been spent for social purposes. Dwight Eisenhower, the president, a Republican, said the same thing. He said every rocket, every missile, every gun essentially steals money out of the hands of our children and our citizens. And Dr. King was certainly an advocate of that, advocate of that as well. He talked about financial literacy. He talked about uh, folks taking their money out of the big banks that don't do anything for them or their community and putting it in the community bank, putting it in the black bank. How often have you heard of Dr. King saying that? Have you ever heard it? And that's one of the things that I think uh, people really need to do on the King holiday. We're approaching it on Monday. A lot of folks see it as a day off from work. Others see it as an opportunity to go to some nice events and get a free dinner or whatever. Uh, you can do that. But the most important thing, as far as I'm concerned, is to study this man, study his words, study his work. I'm of the belief that he still, he still is relevant to this very day. And we want to talk about that. 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600. Who is that on line one? Um, let's talk to Walter. Is that Walter on the line? Hey, Walter, good afternoon. How you doing? Long time, no talk, buddy. I know. It's good to talk to you, Walter. How you been? Pretty, pretty good. Good. You know, you bring up a good subject about that great man, Martin Luther King. Uh-huh. Take a little twist. Now, the war, let's talk about what you mentioned about certain presidents mentioned about wars, wasting money, which could that better than used for the poor and the needy, in some cases, the greedy. Mm -hmm. But remember, without national defense, without building up a military like Dr. Trump's doing, and most Republicans do, <laughs> uh, you have no freedom in other areas. You would never be a nation. We have. Uh, well, the, the, you know what? But no one disagrees on that, Walter. Everybody agrees that we need to have a strong national defense, one that can defend our borders, one that can keep our country safe from folks who would like to overrun it. Uh, nobody disagrees with that. The question is, how much money do you spend on the military? Do you need an adequate military, or do you need a bloated military? How many bombers do we need as opposed to how many schools and how many daycare centers and how many opportunities for people to work and to take care of their kids? That's the real question. I don't think anybody disagrees about the military. And, and, and certainly, 
I'm not going to take sides uh, for or against Donald Trump or Bill Clinton or Barack Obama or any of those folks when it comes to a discussion about Martin Luther King, because I believe the things that we discuss when we talk about Dr. King are larger than politics. They're larger than what presidents come and go. Hey, you know what? I'm going to kind of agree with you on that. I think you balanced it out pretty good. I want to balance it out, too. Yes, you might be shocked what I'm about to say. I might be. Let me hear it. Some wars, like Vietnam and the Iraqi war under the Bush doctrine, and even a lot of Republicans would disagree with me on this, but I think that war was a lot of wasted money. Mm -hmm. All the money that's been, and it, it didn't, and it, as far as I'm concerned, it was never won. Vietnam was never won. Afghanistan, for sure, is never going to be won for a war for over 17 years. Wasted money. And because if you do not mm -hmm. confront the doctrine of Islam and keep calling the religion a peace, you will never win a war the right way. Yep. That's just a side note there. And now, one, one other thing. All right. You, let me go. you just reminded me of a Martin Luther King quote, but go ahead and finish. Martin Luther King today would have been rejected by most of your callers including yourself. Well, it's not fair for you to say that. And, and I can tell you unequivocally, Walter, and I appreciate your call, my friend. I can tell you unequivocally that Martin Luther King Jr. would not be rejected by me today. That is, once again, these Republicans and these Trump supporters trying to impose what they think are beliefs of other people on other people when that is not true at all. I tell you what, I think Donald Trump might be the person who has the biggest problem with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. if he were to come back today. And I guarantee you, Dr. King would have trouble with Donald Trump. What do you think, folks? 313-778-7600. Let's go to John. John is online, too. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thank you, Russell. Russell, I don't think you can. You got to take a soul of that, boy. And then I tell you, Russell, I don't want to do real estate. Uh, Trump, you know, Trump was all my Tyson and dancing about it. He bring a job back in, uh, over there in Indiana, and he was going to bring back so many jobs. Guess what, Russell? Don't find another job and head it to Mexico. Yep. <laughs> and and, 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 and he, he's the main one that always brag about he, he going to bring this back, he going to bring that back and so forth. So I, I, just want, I just want you to understand that you say he killed both of us. <laughs> it's in the, in the lie yourself. So that that was a big lie. Now, some people were already trying to get out of his own building. So he, he, they say he he, he know, almost told him that they were gonna they were gonna say it's all for. Yes. So I just wanted to say that that some jobs is going and going going to Mexico. And so that's one of the big fears in it's all for. And, and Russell, I have to tell you, he he is scared than. <laughs> And he can see because you don't want to go on the oath. Yes. <laughs> they, they got stuff on him. They got stuff on him that if he, they can't even lie. He don't want to go on the oath. So that's, you are that's right, John. And, and let, let, let me explain to folks who might not know, and I appreciate your call, John. You got okay. uh, um, Robert Mueller is set to ask questions of Donald Trump in the investigation into collusion with the Russians. And uh, he and his lawyers trying to decide if he was going to talk to them. His lawyers at first floated the idea of giving written responses to Mueller's questions. That's not going to fly. Either you come and sit down or you don't. And so he's trying to figure out now if that's what he wants to do. And John is absolutely right. He is scared to death for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think he's guilty as he can be. I've seen enough evidence and enough reporting uh, since the very beginning of this to know that he's guilty of something. You don't have that many connections and those many coincidences. It just doesn't happen that way. That's number one. But two, I think that Donald Trump and his lawyers are afraid of Donald Trump because he has shown an inability to think fast on his feet and to answer questions uh, the way he would want to answer them when he's sitting in that hot seat. 313-778-7600. I began the conversation about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We've got the celebrations coming up on Monday. You're going to see them all over town. You're going to hear folks talking about how great Martin Luther King was and how we need to follow his philosophy today. But what does that really mean? Who was Dr. King and how is he applicable to what's happening today? 313-778-7600.
Let's go right back to our phone lines where Jason is on line three. Hey, Jason, thanks for calling this afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Cliff. I had a couple, uh, kind of a conspiracy thing. I don't know. I think, I think Dr. King was killed because he was getting all poor people together, black, white, everybody. And they had, I, my daughter was doing, she, she's doing a report on, on Dr. King. And they were saying like, um, who was the director of the FBI back then? That was, um, that was Hoover. Hoover. Yeah. Hoover was just, they were, the powers that be were just freaking out because he was uniting people. And that's why they killed him. That's, mm-hmm. that's my opinion. I think, I think it's totally right. So I just think they're just, they were afraid the powers to be were just so afraid he was uniting all poor people and talking about stuff that you shouldn't talk about, you know? I, I would agree with you, Jason. I appreciate the call much. I think it was at least a couple of things. One, uh, when he called for the Poor People's March, people don't always know this. He didn't just go to black communities. He went to poor white communities. He went to the Appalachians. He went to several uh, areas of this country where you have poverty. And he talked about the, uh, the need for people who were poor to unify and to approach the government about addressing this issue of, of abject institutional poverty. That's one. But two, Johnson and the government felt double-crossed by Dr. King when it came to Vietnam. I think that uh, President Johnson and some of the folks in Washington said, look, we gave you a Voting Rights Act. We gave you a Civil Rights Act. We have provided more opportunities for black folks than have happened maybe ever in this country. And now you're going to turn on us or go against the war? But Dr. King said it. He said, look, I've got to say what is right. And there were a lot of other black ministers who, who told Dr. King, man, leave that war stuff alone. You're getting a lot of progress on the domestic front, on the social issues. Why mess that up talking about the war? Dr. King said, look, right is right, wrong is wrong, and I've got to be on the side of right. And I agree with you, Jason. I think that those were at least a couple of reasons why some folks wanted to see him die and, in fact, had him killed. 313 